Hey gang, welcome back. In this episode, uh, it's a pretty brief agenda. I'm going to talk about the thought process and planning that I did before getting started painting these pox walkers, and then we'll get right down to business and start painting. Go a little bit step by step and uh, talk through uh, the different stages of the process. So, without any further ado, let's get down to it. This is. <laughs> Zero to forty K. I'm going to go over the thought process before I got started with painting these 30 pox walkers. And I knew going into it that I'd only done a couple practice models. So, uh, and when painting those practice models, I, I kind of just winged it the whole time, which is fine for that. I was mostly learning how to, you know, just hold the brush in a way that's comfortable or mix a little bit of paint uh, or just barely scratch the surface on, on some techniques. Uh, now, you know, these pox walkers are going into my army, so I want to have some level of preparedness before I go into the project of painting them all. I want them to look like they belong together. Uh, so, to start, uh, I had an approach in mind. I didn't want to do anything crazy with colors, uh, but I did want enough variance uh, across all the models where uh, they didn't just look like uh, a big swarm of like two colors. Uh, so essentially I, um, I just went on the internet, I actually went to citadelcolor.com, there's three videos hosted by the same dude uh, that are all about just painting pox walkers. I think one was a speed run, the other two were a little bit more in depth. And I just watched those and uh, went to a couple other little spots and just took notes, you know, sat down and go, okay, they described these colors and the technique that they did. And I just wrote a bunch down and sort of came up with a uh, idea in mind, an approach of what I wanted to take. I made sure that I stayed very intentional. Uh, the internet's a big place, uh, 40k, there's the infinite content you can go look at. You you want to keep yourself on task uh, and not get into a state where you're you're just surfing. Uh, you want to make targeted searches for things and uh, and take notes and and stick to it and give yourself you know only so much time to look into it. Otherwise, you'll just spend a week uh, musing and thinking about the work rather than getting down to it this is the plan that I came up with. Is it comprehensive? Not really. It's missing whole chunks of stuff uh, that in retrospect should have been in there. I didn't think all that much about order of operations uh, or any real process type stuff, but I did at the very least jot down for the different sections of the model the paints in the sort of order that I was going to try them out uh, so that I could take three models and, and do a little bit of R&D, and then from that, uh, put a bunch of check boxes next to the things that I liked the most, and use that to apply it across all the rest of the models. At this point, I knew what I wanted to try out. I knew the, the limits of what I was going to do, so I just went online, ordered the paints that I didn't have that I was going to need. I got some new brushes. Uh, I moved on to uh, a wet palette at this point and uh, just waited for the stuff to show up and, and got to it. So let's have a look. And I am only slightly prepared. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, it's a good thing I brought a paper towel, which for a second there I thought I didn't. Uh, so this may be too thin, we'll see. But I'm finding more and more that these paints everything sort of comes through. Um, by comes through I mean shows through. The reason I'm pretty cool with this being started in um, with the Death Guard Green as a base is I want there to be a sort of like element of green showing through everything to see what that looks like. So even though I'm going to like a lighter color with the rack earth flesh having the green show through this model is insane with all these little organic bits i am struggling a little bit here with the paint coming off of the wet palette this is the first time i've 
tried the wet palette, which I picked up uh, after seeing a few videos on the YouTubes. I am very much getting used to needing to give the paint some moments to sort of meditate on what it's done and soak in. The uh, first two models I did, that didn't really come to fruition in my head while I was painting at any given point between the two of them. A little bit of a Christmas morning moment with each one the next day because I was tired and I put the things down and then you find out that you know, the paint's still doing some work after after you think you're done. It really, like, there's a lot of this. It just looks like absolute junk while you're doing it. Um, and I think it just takes experience to foresee what the paint's going to do after you're done massaging it in. It's a lot, it's a lot like staining. Where the physicality of the paint, it's got to work its way around. And, and obviously my first moment with that was, was very much centered on uh, putting a wash on, on model number two. But even just your base coats, like it takes, takes time for it to soak in, dry out, spread out. And it's a little scary while you're painting. You're looking at the thing going, this does not look like what I, what I want yet. If you learn to flow with it, it's like, it's very dynamic. Oh, feet. Remember the feet. So a downside potentially of using Death Guard Green as like a primer is that you are stuck with green wherever you miss stuff. And I'm gambling on the fact that that's actually going to be cool and okay. Uh, it's going to give a little bit more breathing room to whatever washes I put on these models because they won't just be washing into black and losing any of their qualities, but it's a lot harder to see when you miss the spot that's green as opposed to just like something that's straight up black. I think that's cool though. It'll be good. So while I'm painting, I'm keeping in mind Obviously, I'm like, I'm not trying to slather everything on everywhere, and I'm trying not to miss, or trying not to hit gun bits and, and horn bits, but I, I think I've intentionally, or at least I think the color scheme that I picked intentionally gives some leeway there, as does the model. Like, if I hit the pants, no big deal. The pants are going to be kind of messy, grimy. Uh, if I hit the metal... I'm going over it with metal eventually, like actual metal paint. That's going to help clear up a lot. And then <clears throat> because it's not fine armor work, like this little cinched up spot in the pants, it doesn't need to be perfect because it's not a, like a, a line of a, between two pieces of armor. And so if there's a little bit of overlap. That's fine because just it's crazy asymmetrical. I'll let this guy dry. And I already have mixed feelings about it, but that's fine because it's super wet right now. It's literally just going on there, so I should probably just calm down. Calm down, just calm down. Um, my natural reaction every time something goes on in the first moments is like oh especially like any sort of wash or highlighting that's anything wet it's like oh that doesn't look good and it's like yeah well it's not gonna yet that's not to say that it will magic itself into looking great but you got to be a little patient and we're doing all of this for fun and science so you gotta give it some time. I think that knee-jerk reaction 
it's like two things. One is like the immediate feeling of like, ooh, something's gone wrong. Uh, and two, the you can get distracted by the magic of what's going on in there with as the little recesses get their their moment to do the whatever the opposite of shine is. Huh. It's, it's popping. It's popping. We'll have to see how that dries out. Let's get your footies. All right, moving right along. Uh, guts and tentacles was next on my list of things to do. In this case, there's just a little bit of tentacular stuff there. And I feel like there's, yeah, there's some back there. And I think that was it. I may dab, well, the boils, I have a different plan. We'll stick with that plan. I might find a couple little spots, um, maybe right around where the bone comes out, where I'll add a little bit more of that um, for some flair. And especially because where the bone comes out, it should dramatically get whiter. So maybe a little bit of ring around there of, of whatever accent color I'm doing for, for gutsy stuff will be cool. Uh, our plan from here was to start with thin rack hearth flesh, which we did obviously for all the skin, guts, and boils. I've technically speaking ruined my experiment already because uh, the g guts and tentacle stuff shouldn't have gotten the second coat that I put on them, but that's okay. It's only a singular layer. That's fine. Um, I'll remember that when I post-mort this. Um, but at the very least, all the way at the bottom, it's rock art flesh. It has a different color on it. I'm starting with, uh, what is it, Bugman's Glow. Um, I'm going to thin it out quite a bit on this first guy using a tinier brush. I bought more brushes. Um, you can definitely see where this is going. Um, it's, it's like, oh... I can't wait till I get to the point where it's funny they say it's not it's not the tool you know it's the the artist uh, but that's kind of bull for me right now getting better tools actually matters a lot I'm looking forward to the point at which the tools won't matter but some of my primitive junk just wasn't cutting it uh, so yeah Bugman's glow on this guy Get around in here where that tentacular stuff goes. Um, and this is a pretty thick paint, so I'm being kind of ginger with it. I'm going to get all in there as gently as possible. Uh, the wet palette is awesome. I'm sold on it now. It took a little getting used to, and I had the thing swimming at first. But uh, things are cool now. Very cool. Okay, that that whole thing's a tentacle. Technically a tentacle. So I'm getting all the way up to this whole shoulder. This is definitely the funny, cute part. I can see myself being able to get through some of these pretty quickly. Once I settle on what I'm doing for a color scheme, I'm going to line up 27 more of these guys and consistently do the same basic treatment. It'll go, it'll go quick. Not as quick as I want. Not as quick as my back would want, for sure. But what I do have out of this is an interesting trio. It's kind of cool. Thanks. GG. So what I noticed is that little bubble, it kind of just filled it in, which is not exactly what I was going for, but that's okay. I'm just trying to get around the super bumpy spots. So you get sort of this, yeah, see this back is just covered in bubbly glop. Oh yeah, it's disgusting. Oh, it's so this little blop on the back of his head. Just sort of trying to get him around there. 
So you get this like just gross boogery business going. And you want to be careful not to go all over. You want to overdo it. But it breaks up the color scheme that I already have. He's, oh, he's like big bumps on his foot. You know, it's his ankle bone, but it's also kind of a bump. Just getting in there with a little bit here and there. Get into that recess there. He's kind of got a little bit there. So what you get is these little pops of this yellow that comes through the colors that we already have. In this case, um, this one's like Gilman Flesh and whatever. I can't tell if this is the same. This is maybe the Magos Purple. I'll have to look that back up. It's either the Magos Purple or the Carabra Crimson. But now you got this like ugh, gross, like con contrasty mess going on. It just, the main thing is, is it, it looks unhealthy. And that's very much what I'm going for is these guys are not known for, for great health. All right. And so experiment the second is going to be with this guy. And because this guy's base is already pretty darn green, I'm hoping that the proper essentially terrible misuse of something mixed with Tesseract Glow will allow for some interesting interplay that'll still stick out. And it does, but man, does it look radiological. You immediately notice these little things you, you didn't do last time. I think I missed the head boil last time. I don't think it matters all that much. I don't think I'm going back. You can't take me back. What we're getting here is a green on green, but because the Tesseract glow is so pronounced, It's like danger green. So we got a little bit of this motley thing going on. Like it, it sings. It's really sticking out. Maybe too much, but maybe not. You, know, you, you do want to keep in mind that this little guy is going to be sitting on a table amongst a jury of his his peers. So you got you got some you got some freedom to be a little bold in a few spots at least. But this should be pretty straightforward painting for all three. I'm not gonna rush it, but I don't have to sit and lose my mind over it either. That seems thinner. I'm going to draw some lines with it. Look at this. Oh my god, I put it on my thumb. I don't know if that means good or bad. I see people do it all the time. It, but uh, yeah, I, f I feel special now. Uh, hopefully at some point I'll understand what painting your thumbnail... I mean, I I've obviously get the fact that by painting your thumbnail you can get a good sense of like how thick the paint is. But not for myself having a good sense of what I want yet. I mainly just did that to feel cool. The neat part is, it felt pretty cool. It works. And I do think there's a certain amount of absolutely okay just trying to emulate people that do great work that you respect. And I, I don't believe in the, the as much as it's probably the thesis of this entire project slash journal. I, I don't really believe in faking it till you make it. I, I don't think I'm faking it right now. I'm not experienced, uh, but I certainly mean to be doing what I'm doing. 
I don't feel like I'm trying to be some imposter. I'm just not good yet. And there's a very big difference. Um, and I want to be good. Maybe not fantastic. I don't think I want to do this for a living, but like, man, as an old man hobby, rather than fly fishing and making time flies, seems pretty cool. I do want to get good where I can, you know, I think the first step is just really a lot of, of fundamentals and, and hours served of just doing and doing and doing and seeing results. I going with that anyway um yeah but emulating people you whose work you like it feels good getting in there yep of course you did you talk all that trash about not having to be careful and you forget it's getting late and you get sloppy Getting all these nooks and crannies. Flip this guy over. Yeah, this is one of those spots where as it gets late, you're like, oh, well, if I'd done a black base, it would be like super obvious where I didn't hit it, but I'm still, still digging the Death Guard green as a primer. So now we're going to do our last metal step, which is we're going to take this crazy stuff called Rise of Rust. And we're going to try to delicately, which I've never done with dry brushing, delicately dry brush. Basically, we'll hit the blade. So basically, the point here is that it's been like gobbed into uh, enemies so many times it's got so wet that it's super rusty wow weird instinct I almost immediately dipped it in the water which would have been somewhat counterproductive to dry brushing um, I guess I'll just do this we find a spot find another spot I think that's probably good don't know I don't know much uh, and then We'll just can't really see it. Maybe I didn't get it's famous last words. Maybe we didn't get enough on the brush. I think it needs to be in there a decent amount. Get it in that dry brush, but then not leave it glomming on. It's like a makeup tutorial. Um, you know what? I should probably watch some makeup tutorials. That actually sounds like something that would teach me a lot. Ah, ah. So I don't know if this is gonna come through. Maybe I'll zoom it in a bit. At first I was like, is this even working? It is working. The thing is, it's hit that top edge pretty nicely, even though it doesn't make too much sense. It like crisped up that edge. So what I want to make sure I do is hit this from a variety of angles. 
I think one thing I gotta learn is like how how to hold a brush. I don't know if I should like on the other brushes there's a like a tri cornered nubbin on it on this, which is that's yeah, it is a dry brush, so I got that part right. Um it's kinda tough to tell where you should hold it. And I don't know if it's just a matter of where you feel comfortable or not. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So I'm hitting the rest of it a little bit more lightly. Just little dabs here and there. That is pretty cool. I like this. I think I may have learned a technique that later I will find that I use way too often. Maybe not too often. Too often is a pretty hefty term, pretty loaded. Um, but that I use a lot. And people are like, ah, oh, is that dude that does typhus corrosion and riser rust all the time. But man, is it neat. All right, here's where we get to sort of the YOLO section of this, <clears throat> uh, this little project. Let me find a brush. Where's that guy? That guy's small. This guy. This guy is my beginner brush. Yeah, it's a starter brush. I missed you, buddy. Um, now I gotta do the clothes. My notes for here are subdued bright colors, mix mud with others, and see. I have no idea how to do cloth at all, but I know that this dude has been wearing this clothing for quite some time. Uh, could have been doing something very fun up to the point of the end. And I have all this paint sitting here um, on this wet palette. So what I want to do is make sure that I get some, excuse me, buddy, don't play with that bag. Um, I mean, you can, but don't be too noisy. And let's see how your theory holds up. Yeah, I see it is yellow. It'll add some color. Probably should have chosen by skin tone who got yellow, but it's fine. It's got yellow pants. They're going to get washed in something gross. But what it's going to do is break up the potential monotony of all of the disease-ish colors I've got. And I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm intentionally not like super mixing perfectly the colors on the palette. So that sometimes I get little, you know, depending on where from the brush it comes off, some of it's a little brighter than in some spots than others. Not with any intent on where it is on it, but so that it's just not, so that it's got imperfection. That's what I mean. It's got imperfection. As I'm drawing up paint, some of it, like, you can't really tell. Maybe you'll tell later. Maybe it doesn't matter. But some of it is a little grimier, depending on the brush stroke. Um, and what I sort of pick up from, from the palette because it's not perfectly mixed, it's still sitting as a gradient. But this looks pretty cool. This one I'm excited about. Yeah, there we go. Have fun with colors. Just because you're playing a very morose army doesn't mean <clears throat> There isn't a little bit of color going on. And I can, well, I should be worried about how much, not worried, I should at least be cognizant of how much color I'm adding in. This is going to get a wash of something. What the heck did I say? Yeah, well, it's experimental, so I didn't pick what I was going to wash it with yet. But it will get a wash of something over this to actually get some depth. And that'll, that'll knock whatever craziness I'm adding now down a little bit so I can I can just play with this and have fun you know, this guy had his blue jeans on oh, I, <laughs> I jacked up that side bag uh, but I can still have fun and screw up and maybe fix something or maybe go you know what it's a pox walker deal with it this could get wild now you know what I like it 
it's red, but it's not Ronald McDonald red. And when I hit it with whatever I wash this with to make it look like the guy has not done the laundry in a long time, I'll take this sort of drabbish kind of look of it being faded. It'll add a sort of element of griminess to it. And we'll be good to go. Three identical identical guys. There's some variance there, which I think is cool. You turn around and see their butts, which is I'm going to be looking at the keister end of these guys. When I look down at the table, uh, you've got some some color popping out of that that stew. And here we have the finished product. Uh, there was some Agrex Earthshade that went on the pants to take the color down a little bit. But here's our trio. And uh, if you remember, I had a, a written down plan, which we'll get back to in terms of like what colors were used on each one. I personally liked the middle one the best. So I'm going to use that as my template for the other 27. I think the only additional variance I'll do is I'm going to mix the colors of the clothing up because uh, I did like how that ended up turning out, and I think it'll allow different uh, models in the unit to pop out a little bit. Uh, but this is our result. Now you'll notice that I didn't actually do the shoe step. As I was working, I realized that what I wanted to do is make sure that there was some grime on the shoes that matched however I decided to, to base the models. I still have to base them. I've got some stuff on order, uh, some, some textury stuff uh, to use on the bases, and I'm going to wait until that stuff shows up and I use it, uh, and then I'll just sort of make it look like the shoes are, are mucking through that same sort of material. And that's a wrap, folks. Uh, I'd like to thank you again for taking the time to hang out. Uh, going forward, uh, next time I've got to do the other 27 box walkers. That should be a marathon, for me at least. Uh, I, I'm going to have to think about stamina, consistency, and all that good stuff. Uh, I should start thinking about what model I should do after that, um, after that journey, and then I absolutely need to get faster with editing and production on this stuff. I have so much respect for people that do this for real. Uh, the amount of time sitting in front of a computer scrubbing through uh, even the most meager, silly footage, it's, it's a lot of time and effort. Um, so I need to find some ways to, to speed up my process there. I hope you had fun, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.